Martin. Well, what they're talking about, Frank, is that he's got too much side tire, and uh, you've got to have a certain amount of distance from the trademark of the bat and the side tire. And Nettles is leaving the field as if the game is over. Oh, he's just coming in. I'm not sure. Uh, they might have a legitimate uh, gripe. They might be going to call George Brett out. Well, he is. He's out. Yes, sir. Brett is out. Look at, look at this. Brett is out. And he's steaming back. He is out. And having to be forcibly restrained from hitting plate umpire Tim McClellan. And yeah, welcome so, back to another episode of Too Much Pod Talk. <laughs> yeah. So, how about those uh, managers of the hot seat? Yeah. yeah how so, about the managers? Yeah, you know. So, Dave Martinez is probably one of the one of the managers up. That's really it's his seat right now is like extremely hot. I think. Uh, you know, yeah. there's he's, he's a the terrible play. manager of the bullpen. Is the, like, the Nationals bullpen is just absolutely awful right now, and. You know, it's. I wouldn't be surprised if he's if he's fired, like, I don't know, in like a month. So I don't know if 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 they don't turn it around at least. But you know, I I think they could get hot potentially. But like we've talked about on other episodes, but we'll see what happens. Draft episode. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That was another one where we went off a bunch of tanners. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it was supposed to be on the draft and the signings of Keiko and Kimbrel, and then we talked about a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> it was yeah. not surprising me, to me at all. Yeah, which was which is okay though. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Dave Martinez, terrible bullpen manager. I think Mickey Callaway for the Mets. He's yeah. He's yeah. Not, I've just heard that he's not a good manager. I mean. I could, you could just tell he's not a good bullpen manager either. Granted, they don't yeah. have the best bullpen, but his team is supposed to be good again every year. Same thing for the Mets and Nationals. Uh, if they stay healthy, they'll be good. Well, the Mets are healthy and they're still not good. So. Yeah, and even their starters are playing like shit right now too. Like they. And I think, I think Pete Alonso is the only one who can hit right now. Yeah, like their their starters right now. I think their overall ERA is like. 450 or something like that. So it's like... Oh, yeah. It's starting the start, yeah, the, yeah. Like, the starters are supposed to be, like, really good, but they're not. And, like, That's Cal- Callaway is... Uh, he was a pitching coach uh, like, before, so it's like, how do you not have good pitching? I think Jason you're... Vargas has been their best pitcher lately. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's been so bad. Yeah. So, Steven Max is brutal. Callaway's like so weird because he, then when his pitchers are pitching good, or I think like the not this last game today with Cindergard, which he obviously pitched a gem today, but mm-hmm. and I don't know what his final line was, but I think he only gave up one hit. And um, but the last game it was like he started out pretty bad, and then he I think he retired like fourteen of his last sixteen batters that he faced, and then Callaway runs out there and trots out there and pulls him out of the game. And it's like, oh, yeah. what are you doing? Like, he wasn't even doing 100 pitches. I think he only needed one more out, I, I believe, in the inning. And he pulled him out, and they ended up blowing the lead. So it was like, or, you know, I don't know the exact – what the uh, exact results were. But I, I know not – you leave Syndergaard in that game. Like, it's just – it was his game at that point, just how he was pitching. It was like, dude, like Callaway, and that's not the first time he did it because he did it with uh, with Degrom recently too. Yeah. Where De- Degrom was rolling, and then he pulled him out of the game, and the bullpen the bullpen messed it up for him. It's like, so yeah, he's he's got to be on the hot seat for sure. No blown yeah. leads today for the Mets because they scored enough runs, but they did give up. A- one the one run that was scored by Colorado was after Syndergaard was taken out. He only threw, let's see, he had 98 pitches. He uh, went seven innings, struck out seven, two walks, one hit. Yeah. CRA's at four four five even after a great game. So. Yeah. Dude, I have been sitting in drafts for a few days now, but I I was writing a deep dive on Syndergaard. 
and I was mm-hmm. kind of comparing his numbers this year to his rookie year, how he's kind of pitching similar to – it's like his version of a rookie. Yeah. Year, which is – you know, because a lot of his numbers – I mean, he's still at the top in the league of hitting the corner, pitching to the edges of the zone. I mean, he does that as good as anybody. And it's like it's just weird because – for, for whatever reason, it's like he doesn't want to throw his curveball and his slider as much. You know, I know we're not, we're talking about managers and not Syndergaard, but it's like I don't know if, if I'll ever release this article now because I wanted it to come out before this game. But mm-hmm. um, <laughs> now I'm just, like, frustrated and I probably won't even write it but um, or finish it. But, like, dude, he's, like, throwing so many sinkers and fastballs, and he's got a great fastball. And, I mean, his sinker's fine, but – you know, when you're throwing so many of them and you're not throwing the pitches that he's, he's throwing, it's change up's pretty good, you know, but he needs to throw his curveball and his slider more than what he has been. And that's, I think that's been his biggest problem. But yeah, definitely. I don't know if that's like a Callaway thing or not, you know, since he was a pitching coach. I, I, I don't know if that has one, you know, if that's one to, if it has anything to do with the other, one has anything to do with the other, but. I don't know. I mean, it's just weird to see him kind of take a step back. But he's, but he seems like he's getting back on track now. I, I kind of that was, that was kind of where the article would have went. Was I think that he would get back on track. Yeah. But yeah. Even the bullpen for the Mets, Jerry's Familia has an ERA over six, and I don't know. Just the pitching all around has just been brutal this year. Yeah. I think Jason Vargas actually does have the best rotation or ERA in the rotation. Because I know Matt's, Matt's got torn up. Uh, or wait, when did Matt's pitch? Oh, no, Matt's pitched a good game. Sorry. But uh, what was I saying? DeGrom. DeGrom's been getting, uh, I don't know, he's been getting lit up ever since last season. Like, he's he's had a few good outings here and there, but it's, like, sparsely scattered. I don't know why he can't pitch consistently if hitters went back, watched his tape, and figured him out or what. But it's just weird. Well, and then they sucked against. They've sucked against teams that are far worse than them, like the Marlins. Oh yeah. It's like, how are you guys, Degrom, Syndergaard, Wheeler? You know, I don't know what what the exact lines were for these games, but it's like they've they struggled. I know they've struggled against those teams at times. Teams like the Marlins, yeah. and it's like, come on, like this is a weaker lineup. You should mow through these guys, and it's killing me as far as, like, DFS goes because, like, th- those are the days that you just are like, okay, here's my money. I got yeah. my money on yeah. this dude. Like, this is the horse. I'm putting it on the horse. And yeah. it's like, fuck my life. And when you give up, like, four runs in the first inning, what's going on? I think There's the Marlins yeah. are actually playing better than expected by a pretty fair margin this year. They're- yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I like. I really like Pablo Lopez in the rotation. I think he's going to be great. Like he's pitched two good games in a row. Granted, they lost today, but that wasn't his fault. He only gave up one run. But he's got really good stuff. He's, his ERA is at four two six, so not terrible. And uh, he's four and five, sixty nine strikeouts and sixty nine innings, one point one two WHIP, so pretty good. Yeah, their their arms are are pretty solid for the most part. Yeah, Trevor Richards and Jose Urena have been good lately, too. Uh, yeah. Urena got torn up uh, against the Braves the other night, but uh, other than that, Richards and then Urena, every other start, has been really solid. And Caleb Smith, too. Yeah, yeah. Caleb Smith is like the one a real ace, too, I think. I mean, they're all yeah. good. They all have even more potential. Like, I don't think we've seen the, the ceiling from yet. Yeah, and actually, mm-hmm. even Sandy Alcantara has a three eight ERA, so they're not pitching bad. It's just they can't score runs. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then they run yeah, into so. those weird games where they just like no, wow. they do blow up an ace or something. Like what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they they went sixteen nothing on the Brewers earlier this week against Chase Anderson. Yeah, yeah that was nice. Uh, not, yeah. Yeah, wasn't. But anyways, I'm not gonna get into that. <laughs> uh, going back to like the managers stuff, like 
between like Callaway and uh, Martinez, who do you guys think is you know on the hotter seat right now? Definitely Dave Martinez. He's got yeah. a, a more well-rounded team. He's got great starting mm-hmm. rotation, a great lineup. The bullpen on paper is decent, and but in, in reality, it's terrible. Sean yeah. Doolittle is the only one who can get anything done. But he's got a much more well-rounded team than uh, Mickey Callaway and the Mets, and still nothing's getting done. So, Yeah. I definitely agree with that. Yeah, I think I agree with that too because like, I think Brody Van – is it Van Wagenen? Is that how you say his name? The Mets uh, GM? Mm. Yeah. Um, I think I think his relationship is a little bit stronger with um, Callaway than it is – than Martinez is with their management. So, I, I don't know. I think he'd be more lenient with – it's kind of like he he's, seems like the guy that he he wanted there to be the coach. So yeah, I yeah. think I don't think he wants it to fail. Like he, I mean, nobody wants it to fail. But I think, you know, even I mean, he he might be done. They might just both be done after this year. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think he might. You know, that's a good possibility. But I think he might be more. Um, uh, give him a little bit more leeway as far as that goes. Which I mean, I could be wrong too. But it just seems think, like. Uh... No, I was just gonna say it just seems like that would be that that would be I would still lean Martinez the hotter seat. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. And I mean they they also fired their pitching coach too, so it's like that makes oh, it even more right. more likely. I think uh yeah, Scott Service is on the hot seat too in uh Seattle. Oh yeah, I think so. Because they I started think... off red hot. He's just yeah. I, I it's not all his fault, obviously. They don't have mm. an amazing team, but no. I mean how do you start so great, and then just tailspin like crazy. They're one of the worst teams in baseball now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that also speaks to talent, though, too. I feel like because you know teams get they go through these stretches, and I don't I don't mean to disagree with you too much because I, I obviously I think he he could be on the hot seat, but um, te- teams go through these stretches where it's like you know maybe that he get the Mariners would have went through a ten game tailspin in July or something or in August, but instead mm-hmm. they, uh, they went through their hot streak, a 10 game winning streak in June. You know, instead they mm-hmm. started the season really hot and then they got really cold just, you know, soon after that. But I think it's kind of like more to the talent of the team with, you know, I mean, they really didn't have any pitching. I mean, I don't know. Pitching is definitely the issue because they have some guys in the lineup. They've got Encarnacion. They've got Daniel Vogelbach who can only hit righties. I saw his batting average against lefties is one fifteen. So Oh my god. Jesus. I don't even know if he can have someone he'll never be an everyday player if he can't mm-hmm. hit a lefty. One fifteen. I, I feel like I could hit one fifteen like against lefties. You can buck for it more often. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's really sad. Yeah, I, I just think and then there's one guy that I want to talk about later on too when we get there, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, they didn't put as much talent into this team. I thought they would be better than, you know, like the A's and stuff and, and even in the Rangers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're like surprise teams, honestly, for me, but it's like still, I, I don't know if I, I, I wouldn't blame Scott service a hundred percent, but I mean, you know, if they... I think it depends how much worse they keep doing this year. Because if, I mean, like the tailspin they've been on is so bad. That's the only reason I brought it up. Because like they were, I, I forget what their record was, but when someone told it to me, like since a certain since their winning streak ended, it was it, they have like the worst record in baseball. So it's not oh, like yeah. it's been like you know they've been bad. They've been terrible. That's the only reason I bring it up. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. There's like you said, surprise team like the Rangers. If the Rangers had an ounce of good pitching other than Mike Miner, mm-hmm. they would be in such a good spot right now because Drew Smiley needs to get out of that rotation. He needs I to agree. never yeah, pitch yeah. in the majors again after this. I'm and really then, surprised that they haven't DFA'd him like I know. He's got pitching prospects too. Yeah, they've got young guys they can call up. Well then Taylor uh, Heron or Heron Hearn, I forget, I, I don't know how to say his name, but it's like they called him up, and I think he immediately got hurt, and that was supposed mm-hmm. to be the one, you know, prospect that they were 
Well, I mean, they have higher regarded prospects, but that was supposed to be the guy that was ready this year. Yeah. And it's, like, sad that he got hurt right away. But yeah, for sure. I don't know. Maybe it's just a case with the Rangers where they're just being patient with some of these guys because, you know, I mean, the last thing you want to do, and the Sox are kind of in the same situation, the White White Sox, they don't want to rush these guys like Dylan Cease just because, you know, somebody's struggling or or somebody – gets hurt or, you know, they, they don't want to do yeah. that, which I don't blame them for it. I mean, you want to make sure they're 100% just ready for the majors before you call them yeah. up. Yeah, I mean, especially since they're not even going to do anything this year. It's like even even if they somehow sneak it into the playoffs, like they're, they're not going to like win any series. So Yeah, well, I don't know. It's, it seems like they're – I mean, I would agree with you, but, like, look at – I guess that goes into what you're, we're going to talk about later with the buyers and sellers thing, but like mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I think there's a few teams that can definitely surprise people. Late runs and then yeah, I mean the White Sox mm-hmm. have talent. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think they'll be sneaking into a wild card spot just because of the AL East, but I mean right. ne- next year they could very well get a wild card spot depending on. You know, who else is having success? Yeah. yeah I, kind of, I kind of looked at the White Sox the same way. Like, they would be, you know, contending, really contending next year. But right now, it's like that second wild card. I mean, you got, you got the AL East, and you got the Yankees and the Rays at the very top. And then you have the Red Sox, what, like seven games back? Yeah. So, sure. I mean, and they're they're fighting for – not only the first wild card, but the second wild card too. I mean, there's just like a, a jumbled up mess after that. So it's like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's really weird. It's going to be really interesting to see like how many of these teams believe in themselves. And I mean, I, I would for sure say that the Red, so- the Red Sox should believe in themselves and should be, you know, going for it this year. But after that, it's like, man, I, I don't know. It's, it's interesting to see where where these teams uh, look at themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How they view themselves, I should say. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely going to be a fight for that second wild card because I think the whoever loses the AL East is going to be a, the second wild card. So, I mean, the first wild card. Yeah. That's you would think so. You would think so, and like the Red Sox have been playing a lot better. So, yeah, but mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. It it's really weird. There's 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 just such a weird team to look to evaluate too. Like mm-hmm. I would definitely, I would definitely. Say, oh well, of course, yeah. The first wild card will be either the Rays or the Yankees. Yeah, that's, but yeah, that's a yeah. I I don't know. I spaced out for a minute. I thought you were talking about the second wild card. <laughs> uh, I no, I said that I misspoke. <laughs> It was like the second one. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's it'll be really interesting to see though. Like I, I think, I think the Red Sox. I would still put them as the favorite though to be the second mm-hmm. one. I agree. But you just never know. I mean, it's baseball. Anybody can get hot mm-hmm. at eight. I still think that the AL East is going to end up being a three-team race. Like I think the Red Sox get will make their way back into that. Like they're, I think I'm expecting them to get hot, like at least within like a month or two or something. And like they're not going to be playing as bad as they did at the beginning of the season, like all season. So, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. It really just comes down to how 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 good the Yankees and Rays can play all season. Because I, if they can still keep playing at the level that they have, that they have, then then it's it'll be between them, but I think the Red Sox will still sneak find a way to get in there. Mm. Yeah, so next? what do you we can talk about sell about buyers and sellers now. Even though that wasn't really the next topic, but if you wanna to go to that next. Yeah, sure. I mean yeah, it's a good place to go. Yeah, because yeah. we were we talked about it a little bit already. So, yeah, I think uh, a team 
that could definitely be buying up at the deadline is two. I think uh, the Minnesota Twins might look at a, uh, either someone in, in the rotation or someone in the bullpen. I don't know which one because, you know, they don't have the strongest in either. I mean, they've been making do with what they have, and the rotations actually pitch well above expectations. The bullpens, you know, it's solid. But I could definitely see them adding a fifth starter. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know what price they want to you know, what they want to pay up. I don't expect them to give anyone who's crucial to their team right now. So it would have to be probably a prospect. Uh, definitely not Kirillov, but someone like yeah. lower in their system. And then also the, um, um, I think the Brewers will buy on an, on an arm too, because the rotations what's holding them back from winning the division right now. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, the one, the other team that I probably buy for an arm is the Yankees. They've, you know, just today, the uh, Domingo Herman, they announced that he went on the IL now. So yeah. they, they've been struggling lately with pitching too. This, this past week was awful with yeah. pitching, not just you know, not the starters either, just bullpen too. And yeah. it's just they definitely need to add somebody else in there in that rotation, like. It would have been nice We're to get Keiko. Yeah, it would have been nice to get Keiko, but I, I, I wasn't mad that they didn't because I don't know. I just, I don't think yeah. he would have been good in the AL East. So if they can get somebody, even if they could get somebody like Stroman, or yeah, I don't, I don't really want Bumgarner. No, I don't. I hate Bumgarner. Throwing out there, but it's, I don't really want him. Oh come on, yeah. playoff, playoff Bumgarner! Everybody, <laughs> he's the savior. Yeah. I don't know, he's not the same pitcher as he was. Though. I don't. I don't, I don't think know. so either. But, you know. Well, I saw, but I did. It is kind of similar. It could end up being a similar situation to you know uh, Verlander, because Verlander started to. He was kind of declining when he was on the Tigers, and then he got traded over to the Astros, and then you know he was lights out in the in the playoffs that year. Yeah, but the Astros make everybody they get better. They make Charlie Morton who wasn't even relevant into a star yeah. who's now making fifteen million a year, which is too cheap for how good he's doing. And then uh, you know, Keiko was good for them for a while. And then Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole was a bust for the Pirates for the most part. I mean he had a good year, but he wasn't living up to expectations. He goes to Houston and he's striking everybody out, so I don't know if they're I, I don't know what's in the water over in Houston, but they got the pitching uh, mojo. They just know how to yeah. pitchers. Exactly. Like, okay, but Bumgarner, like, here's the thing with Bumgarner. Like, he's he's 29 years old only still. I mean, we say that now. I mean, I'm saying that now. Like, 29 years old, you're pushing – he's pushing 30. He'll be a free agent next year. Well, like, I don't know. Is he over the hill completely or is this just like – I mean, it seems like he – do, he doesn't seem like the same pitcher that he was. But he never – I don't know. He was always just like the, the postseason. He gets looked at in such a high regard because of the stuff that he's done in the postseason, to me anyways. And, I mean, yeah. I know he's put up like – he's put up pretty good numbers, season numbers in the past too. It's not just the postseason, but it's always been his postseason is what really pushes him over the top as far as how people view him to me. I'm like, if you were to add him to the Yankees or let's just say a contending team, let's say, for example, the Rangers were to go out and get him. Mm -hmm. You know, I know it's completely – both of those parks, you know, in Texas and then in New York, they're both good for hitting. So, you know, he he gets the drop-off there from San Francisco to going to Texas or going to New York or something like that, or even Minnesota. But – it's like, I feel like if he if he was on a team that was really making a push, and you know you get to the playoff time, I mean you kind of want those guys with experience too. So, you know, because hitters, I mean, they feel that pressure. You know, it comes down to pitching when you get to October, and they can really clutch up and be that guy. That's really what you're. That's what you're trading for. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know. I could possibly see him. You know, I mean, we kind of rag on him a little bit, but like I could possibly see him really making an impact for somebody. For you, know, I don't know what it would cost somebody. You know, that's the other thing. Like, what are they going to ask for? 
But yeah. you're talking about a guy with an expiring contract at this point. So mm-hmm. maybe not as much as 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 we might have thought. So it's one thing to think about at least. I well like mm-hmm. a buyer, like I don't know. I feel like the Red Sox I don't know. I I think they need bullpen help. Mm, definitely. I'm not convinced if the Red Sox are going to be buyers or if they're going to be sellers because I think they could m- maybe sell on a guy like David Price. Um, yeah. It all de- it all depends on what their situation is by the trade deadline, yeah. like how far out they really are. If they're still in contention, I doubt they sell. But no. uh, if the if they're like fighting for the second wild card, if it's not looking good for them, I can easily see them selling on. Um, uh, price and then I I don't agree with this, but people are saying they can sell on JD Martinez. I'm like, you oh, gotta keep someone like that around. No, you don't do that. Yeah, there. Are... What are you gonna get for him? That's worth what he's worth right now. He he's such a good hitter. He's still kind of young. He's what a 30 or 31, I think. He's not like pushing 40 or anything. He's got like, some good years left in him. You're not gonna yeah. get anything better for him. Plus, yeah, he, hasn't, he hasn't been as good as. JD Martinez is capable of yet this year. Mm-hmm. What yeah. do, I mean, yeah, he's hitting 296 with 12 bombs, but we we know Martinez is capable of hitting more home runs than that. Yeah. And I just think, nah, you you, you don't sell him. Like you're I, I don't think you're you're right around the corner. Even if you're selling this year, you're selling guys that are not gonna help you next year, really. Or that you feel I've like heard uh I've heard selling on Eduardo Nunez. He's not going to bring back anything. No. Uh, people, they're they're saying Mitch Moreland won't bring back anything either. Yeah. Like you can't sell on these guys who are role players, platoon guys who really aren't even that good. And mm-hmm. then I, I, there's that one Reddit idiot saying that they're mm-hmm. going to sell on Mookie Betts. So, oh, yeah. My. Right. Oh yeah. Sure. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Sell the MVP. Like Jesus Christ. <laughs> Because they want their team. That's who's whoever said that just wants their team to have them. That's yeah, it. yeah. Like I, I don't know. Like here, here's the thing. There's so many teams. Like we were talking about when we were talking about the managers on the hot seat. There's so many teams right on that fringe, where you look at even a team like the White Sox, teams like the Indians. Like these are the teams that I think should be sellers. You look at the the Indians. I think they got to move a starting pitcher. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. At least that's why I would say that that that's where they're going to get their most value for. Yeah. yeah. The most most bang for their buck and bring something back in return. But and then the White Sox, they should be sellers. Mm-hmm. They should be looking to get rid of somebody out of that bullpen or you know something like that. Uh, yeah. Conway yeah. Or Cologne. I would look to or, uh, Kelvin Herrera. Yeah, or Herrera. Uh, I don't know how much they're gonna bring back though. That's really gonna be beneficial to the White Sox. Like mm-hmm. these relievers who are in their thirties. I mean, they're just mediocre now. Kelvin Herrera used to be good, but he's just average. So, I mean, I think that's like the Mitch Moreland thing. Like, what are they really gonna get back that's even worth trading those guys? I, I would, I would disagree with you. Just a little bit, only because we've seen it in the past where the White Sox have made these moves. Like even with the Yankees, like look at, you know, Canley. That's true. Um, and you know, because what what's the premium? What are what are guys looking to always improve on? Like teams like the Red Sox or teams like the Cubs just made a deal for um, striking a deal with Kimbrel. Um, the Braves they still need bullpen help. I mean, these teams are willing to kind of pay that extra penny just for the bullpen guys when, you know, maybe they they are a little over the hump or a little bit older, aging. But you're not going to – like, I, I wouldn't – yeah, I agree. You're not going to get much for, like, Moreland or, you know, Perez or, you know, guys like that because who really – they don't really need – nobody really needs that. Mm-hmm. Right. They do to a certain point, but they can find it elsewhere for cheaper. Or if you're the one that's going to sell it cheap, then they'll buy it from you. But like, yeah. I feel like relieving relief pitching is is a little bit more at a premium now, just because we've seen yeah. how the, 
how the game has been going. That's all. Yeah, that's true. I think Colum is definitely a candidate for the Braves. Uh, Kelvin Herrera, on the other hand, I really don't think he'll bring anything back at this point. He's pitching to a 7.04 ERA right now. I mean, he's giving up 11 hits per nine, four walks per nine, and only striking out seven per nine. His whip is 1.7. He's just uh, he's having a brutal season. So, I mean, that could be one of those guys where you don't have to give up very much for him, and then he becomes, like, good for your team. So I can see a team, you know, testing the waters with him, seeing if they can give up practically nothing. So uh, I don't think he's worth much, but I think he still could go. Yeah. Yeah. What about a guy like – I don't know. I, I wanted to mention this earlier with the Rangers. Like, we, we all kind of look at them as – is this team that's not ready yet? And they, they have some prospects and even, like, pitching prospects and stuff, starting pitching. But we, I didn't look at them as a team that was ready to compete this year. And now I might be changing my opinion, but I, I want to ask you guys a question first because mm-hmm. I sound like a complete moron. I don't know – I really don't know much about their bullpen this year. And I did – I knew a lot about it before the season, but I don't know how they've been playing, how they've been doing what what would you say about their bullpen? Like, is their bullpen – Is it It's a, been brutal this year. Like, their closer is Jose LeClerc, who's pitching you an ERA over five right now. He was good last year, but he – really, you can't trust him for – to come in and get a save. They have, like, the guys that have been role players. Uh, let me look real quick so I don't get my stats wrong. Yeah, so – uh, let's see. LeClerc's got a five even ERA, but I think that's different after today. Yeah, that's you got so Sean weird, Kelly, dude. who's actually pitching good. Sean Kelly's got a two three eight ERA. He's kind of the, been their uh, closer. They've kind of mm-hmm. had a closer by committee because LeClerc five saves, Kelly seven. And then uh, let's see. Yeah, the rest of their bullpen. I mean, they just got these no name guys. Like, like I, I remember Jesse Chavez from a while ago, but he's thirty five. I, th- I didn't even know he was still in the league. He was good last year with the Cubs, at least. He was good with the Cubs last year. But... He was. He's doing decent with the uh, Rangers, 3-5 ERA. But then, like, there's Jeffrey Springs, who I'm not oh, – I don't know who that is. He's 5-4-7 ERA. Chris Martin, and no, not the Coldplay singer. He's uh, 33, 3-7 <laughs> ERA. I, mean, see, like... I was expecting more from LeClerc, though. I guess, like, going into the year, I did the preview for him, and – like I, yeah. I expected a lot mm-hmm. more from Leclerc. He's striking out 14.3 per nine. But, Holy uh, God. Oh, geez. yeah. <laughs> but he's also walking five. He's walking five, seven hits, but 14 strikeouts. But he's just, I don't know. I don't really know what the deal's been with him. Yeah, it sounds like he can't just can't control the ball. And then when he tries to, then he, he's getting hurt. Yeah. He throws over the plate. Mm-hmm. Because he's probably, yeah, probably so. in trouble and getting himself in a fastball count, it sounds like. But man, because he's the Rangers. Tough. Yeah, they the, mm-hmm. the Rangers could definitely uh, be buyers for either the rotation or the bullpen. Because I mean, the, their rotation it's that's like something that's been by committee too. Mike Miner's been the best. Lance Lynn has been okay, and then Drew Smiley's absolutely awful. Uh, Shelby Miller needs to retire too. He's got a nine ERA and eight starts. He's like, those Tommy John guys. Those Tommy John guys just—they took a flyer on those guys, and it's yeah not working. That trade looks good for the Braves right now for Swanson. I mean, he's not playing as good as he should be for where he was drafted, but he's definitely better than Shelby Miller. So, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Like well, that I mean, that kind of changes my thought though a little bit. Like now that now that you're telling me about the bullpen, like I kind of I kind of want to go the other route and say that they should trade Mike Miner and be sellers. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah, I was gonna say that's the same thing. It's like uh, if you only have one starting pitcher, your team's playing no bullpen. No bullpen, really. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, guys with potential, they're just not playing like they're not playing like shit this year. I mean, I would just – let's see what we can get from Miner, which probably somebody's going to ante up for him. So, Yeah, it's like a sell-high yeah. tactic like in fantasy. He's, play, he's having a good year. I mean, he's kind of been mediocre throughout the last few years of his career. But, I mean, he's having a good year. See what you could get for him. And then uh, 
Yeah, so yeah, I can see a but... team like the Braves. Well, he already yeah, touched for the Braves before. I don't know that they, since they got Keiko, they'll go for another lefty. But no. maybe the Brewers or someone like that could pay up for Mike Miner. I could really see that. I could see the Brewers. I could see maybe the Twins. Yeah, yeah, maybe the Twins. Yeah, maybe the Twins. May I? The Dodgers don't need pitching. No. Mm-mm. Look at that National League. the Rockies? How about the Rockies? I mean, it's weird. Mm-hmm. Like, that's another hitter's ballpark. It's already shown that he can pitch in a hitter's ballpark. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. I, it's the, that's an option right there. I would have to look at that. That's Especially a- if Kyle Freeland can't pitch because he's he's been terrible, but I, which just sucks because I like Kyle Freeland. Uh, I don't know what the deal is with him. If hitters just figured him out or something, but. I don't know. He's always up and down. It seems like with Freeland, but last year he was like fifth in Cy Young voting, which I don't think he should was that good. But I mean, he that's where he finished. So it's fucked I up. Guess, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would not have voted for him to be fifth, but I mean, yeah, he's yeah. he was solid though. I don't know. It's weird how he kind of fell off this year a little bit. Yeah, as much as he has, at least like that's. I don't know. It's kind of like with the Rockies. Like, how do you view? How do you view them? Like, they're probably. I mean, it's. I think they're contenders. I honestly, think so. mm. I think with the lineup they have, I mean, they've got obviously Arenado and Story, and if Story can start hitting for better average against righties, they'll be even better. He smashes lefties. Arenado's just great, and you got guys. David Dahl's been playing fantastic. You got Rymel Tapia who gets on base a lot. I really like him. I mean, they've they've got a good team. They've got. Uh, they're pitching, you know, it's the issue again. Herman Marquez is like their best pitcher, so if they add another arm, maybe they can make a uh, run. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, they're they're on the fringe for sure, and I would say that I'd have to agree. Like, I think they should be buyers at least. Like, I don't, I don't know. What are you What are you waiting for? Like, you can they could sneak into a wild card spot. I don't think they're catching the Dodgers, but mm-hmm. no, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I think. They- I mean, I, I'm not convinced that. Uh, I I was watching intentional talk with Millar and Rose on MLB Network, and uh, you know I'm not convinced that there will be any wild card teams from the NL Central. I think I, I don't know. I hmm. think uh, the Cardinals are done. I think, and uh, it's gonna be between the Brewers and the Cubs. But I could easily see the Brewers falling off with the kind of, with the pitching they have. Like I mean. If Chase Anderson's not gonna be able to pitch like he has in the last two weeks or two starts, and then you just if if they don't buy on a pitcher, it's it might be a rough go for them. And I could see the Rockies catching them for a wild card spot. Yeah, I mean, oh well, shit! I think the Rockies actually are. Aren't they? No, well the the Brewers are first in the wild card. Well, it'd be Brewers or Cubs right now because they're tied. Right. But and then you got, the Braves. yeah, Atlanta. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not really convinced 100 percent either. But right now they have a pretty sizable, decent. Yeah. But, I mean, it's I'm, early. You know, I'm I mean, not convinced in the Braves either, though. I don't know about them. Their bullpen kills them. Yeah, they're going to need some help. That's what's so weird about the Keiko thing. Like, I mean, because mm-hmm. they should have went Kimbrough. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's like because it, the Twins, I heard they, they wanted two years for Kimbrough. They were willing to do two years, but they didn't want to do three. Yeah. So, and the Cubs kind of beat them out with that and then with the fourth-year option. But I, I don't know. I never heard anything about the Braves if they tried to or – it was almost like a domino effect, you know? Like, once the draft got done, then it was like, okay, the first chosen or the first that signed was Kimbrell, which I, it's kind of how I thought it would be. Like, you're going to go for the reliever first. I think, like, whoever was going to win that battle, it would be Kimbrell going first. And then, yeah. and then Keiko, obviously, right after that. But, I don't know. I never heard anything with the Braves, and I, I know everybody wanted him. Like the, their fan base really wanted him to go there, but and return home. But it's just, yeah, I don't really trust their relief pitching, and like the Brewers, just their entire 
starting staff, but you can't really trust that at all. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like, okay, Woodruff, he's been solid, but even him. Not like Zach Davies either, so. I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, I could be like partially biased because I just I've just seen these teams so much over the years, like between the Cardinals and the Brewers, and the team that scared me the most going into the year was the Cardinals, and mm-hmm. since facing them, you know, and I know it's been back and forth. Like we were talking before we started this, uh, me and Gio were talking about how it was three. The Cubs won three at home. All three, they swept them the first time around. Then the Cardinals swept them at Bush for three, and then now the Cubs won three at Wrigley. So it's six to three. There's their season series, but it's like I never really, I don't know. Just after seeing them this year, I'm not really as scared of the Cardinals as I've been in years past because they always seem like that sneaky team. Yeah, that might mm-hmm. really come to bite me in the ass, bite the Cubs in the ass, but. Mm-hmm. Don't scare me this year. Like I think they should be sellers. Yeah, I do too. I mean, who are some guys that they can sell on? I mean, I, I, there's so many. They have a lot of good young talent. Like you know, you got to keep like Jack Flaherty around, Harrison Bader, a lot of young guys. But I could see like Matt Carpenter maybe. I don't, I don't know if they're willing to give him up because he's been with them for so long. But... Yeah, I mean, whoever, yeah, like, people always need a good. The teams are young's gonna stay. Oh yeah, for sure. The so young's... They're not gonna give up any of their good young guys. De Young, uh, you mm-hmm. know, any of those guys. Bader, Flaherty. Flaherty's been uh, just on and off this year. Uh, so inconsistent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and De Young's had a really good year this year. He started mm-hmm. well. He started out really hot. I think he could, he came back down to earth a little bit. But even his back down to earth is like probably the best on his team, you know. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah, one of them. So I don't know. I mean, I guess yeah. Maybe I misspoke. Maybe I shouldn't say they should be sellers, but it's just like mm-hmm. if, if they're still maybe seven or eight out, and let's say we get closer to you know middle of July. Yeah. The All Star, you know, you're getting closer to the wire. Where all right, you got to make a decision now. And this year is so tricky because you only have that one deadline. Right. So it's mm-hmm. like the waivers. I think you know, they... Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, I was just gonna say I think they definitely could be sellers, but it's like the thing with the Nationals. Like their team is talented, where they could go on a run, so that you don't want to regret giving up someone that could be a crucial to a like, late-season run that could, you know, they could snag a wild card spot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's just, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting because I, that, like, you always had teams that, like, the Cubs have been notorious for doing this too, you know, but, like, last year, I believe they got Murphy, Daniel Murphy, after the, you know, the immediate trade deadline. Yeah. So then it became a, a waiver claim. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, uh, yeah. And it's like I mean, just, Justin Verlander was after the, like, their initial one too, so. Yeah. I mean, now it's like, it's almost like teams have to prepare for the injury bug too. Mm-hmm. Like, you almost have to add depth and, like, send these guys to the minors or, like, send some guys with options to the minors and be like, okay, we're going to call you up in September. We will call you up September 1st, but we have to have this guy here who doesn't have any options. You know, it's going to be really interesting to see how these teams how these teams play it this year with the trade deadline and with just managing the roster or, roster in general. But... I think it's going to make it funner. I think it's going to make it more fun. Like, honestly, I I don't really like how you have a trade deadline and everyone's excited for this deadline, and then all of a sudden, two weeks later, I don't even like the Daniel Murphy game to the Cubs. But, 
it's just it makes it funner that you're anticipating that day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the Yankees would have won the World Series if it wasn't for that. Well, I mean, at least been in the World Series until 2017. Because mm-hmm. it was yeah. ver- like they wouldn't have lost the series if it wasn't for Verlander. Oh yeah. Yeah, Verlander, fuck, he fucked you guys up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was so that was so frustrating. I bet. Uh, we go next? Want to go to the players who ever lived up to expectations next? Sure. Yeah. So, um, let's see here. The one guy that's uh, – well, we could talk about guys that, like, you know, that had long contracts that didn't – and, you know, obviously one big one is Chris Davis. He signed that huge contract with the Orioles. And, you know, he's been terrible for the Orioles. And that's putting it light. That's putting it very lightly. Yeah. <laughs> but there's also, uh, you know, Ellsbury for the Yankees, Cespedes. Now he's out for the season this year, too. So again. it's again, yeah. So it's they, he signed a four year, 110 mil. Four year, hundred ten million dollar contract, and uh, there's still two years left on it. So, you know that that contract didn't work out either. But you know, um, there's other saw other guys that you know, that had really high expectations and didn't uh, haven't really panned out yet. And we'll, we'll wait to kind of see if they will. So, uh, Bryce Harper this year hasn't played that well, but I've, he's I think I'm, he's going to break out soon. So, we'll see what happens there. Yeah. Uh, what, what other what other players you you guys have that you know haven't really uh, panned out yet? I think Manny Machado's been pretty bad this year. So it's not oh, yeah. this year. He's, he's he just hasn't been hitting the ball. Like, I was on DraftKings and I saw his price was like thirty five hundred or something. I'm like, this oh, is geez. Manny Machado. He's, he's, he's he just can't hit. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what his deal. Is. Um, speaking of that, with Machado and, and uh, Harper, like, bo- yeah, both those guys have, I feel like have been just disappointments compared to, like, how how much how much people talked about them going into the season, you know? So maybe, obviously, they're, we will look at them as a disappointment anyways because of how much we've hyped them. But we're, we're purists. Like, we're pure baseball fans, so we just know when somebody's not playing up to their potential. So I don't feel like we're, we are – everybody else that's just looking at them as, oh, they're supposed to be God. They sound for this much money. I, I never look at somebody like that as a player. But right. They've, they've definitely underperformed. Like, look at the war this year, just that alone. I mean, Harper and Machado both don't have wars of one yet to this point in the season. And like, the guys that they've been in the same category as or, like, people have been putting them in the same category, the same bucket – which obviously you you can't do because he's on a whole entire different planet from everybody else in the world. But Mike yeah. Trout has a war of four point four this year. Right. So those guys don't even have a two combined war. So I mean Mike Miner is a four war too. <laughs> Mike Mike Miner? His war is four point oh. Oh wow. <laughs> use that for example to use that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, uh, man. That's ridiculous. Like, uh, that's good. Really good for him because he's killing it. But like, I don't understand. I don't know. They just they've definitely underperformed in my in my book. Like I yeah. And, and then there's like you say Kikuchi to me. Like I know no nobody really looked at him as like he's gonna be a like a star necessarily. Mm-hmm. But I was expecting a lot more from. He's got an ERA of four point nine nine right now. Yeah. Angels like, are his kryptonite. Man, I don't just I don't get a three and four with a. I, I know it's his first year in the majors. And he's twenty seven years old, and maybe he, we just we overhyped him. But to me, that's a disappointment. That I mean, maybe it's because we all overhyped him. But he looked like he had such good stuff, and I think it was for good reason that we did hype him up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and then like Robinson Cano, like with mm-hmm. the. Like, that's another one that, to me, just really stands out because it's like, 
his career numbers are so good. And I, I just, I still think he's just much better than what he is. And now he just went back on the IL. So yeah, yeah. it's like, man, really Cano, his numbers this year is slashing, uh, 238, 284, 366 with three homers and 14 RBIs. Nice. I mean, that, that's, that's terrible for Cano. Mm-hmm. That's not anywhere near his career numbers. He was expecting a lot more really hungry off of that suspension, too. But, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Those are my major disappointments, I guess. Yeah. And another one here I got is it's going to upset you, Joey, but uh, you, Darvish, uh, for the Cubs, he's so far. Uh, so far this season, you know, after they gave him a six-year, $126 million contract last year, he's, this year he's, he's got a 480 ERA. He's walked 44 batters in 66 in the third innings. And, you know, it's a six six walks per nine and a, a 7.7 hits per nine. So he's, you know, he's been pretty bad so far. And, you know, that contract, that, that's definitely another contract that hasn't really panned out. Yeah, it's been brutal. He, I will say this, though, and, like, I agree with you, 100% disappointment from what they were signing him for yeah. and what he's done so far. Like, it's so weird because we, we are, like, treating him almost like a rookie in here mm-hmm. around here, this area, or, you know, people that are Cubs fans. Like, because every little thing that he does okay, it's almost like – you're just extremely excited about what he's doing that day that might be like somewhat decent. And, yeah. but it's really weird because if you take out one of his, if you take out his, this is his last six starts, right? So if you take out one of those starts and the, the one start, the, the wind was blowing out really bad and he gave up some really weak home runs at Wrigley. We know, we know how the wind plays at Wrigley. You hit a pop up, the ball goes out of the yard. If if the wind is blowing out, if the ball's if the wind's blowing in, and somebody hits a screamer that should be gone any day, it might not leave the yard. So it's just it just plays like two different ballparks at Wrigley. But he played he pitched in the game. The, I think the total score the, the final was like nine to seven or eight to seven, and the Cubs ended up winning the game. So I was still okay with that. But if you take that one start out, he had – I'm looking at his line right now. In his other five starts, 26 and two-thirds innings pitched, 16 hits, nine earned runs, one homer, 36 strikeouts, and a 3.09 ERA. So I would say that that's – like his 4.88 ERA is tough to look at as – I don't know. Like it, it, it leaves you for room. Like it's a, it's a positive, you know, it's definitely, I would take it as like the one bad start mixed in with the last six starts. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he's pitching deeper into games. I mean, his walk rate is still a little bit high, but I mean, this guy for guys that have pitched at least 500 innings, he's got an 11.01 K per nine rate which is first among starters that have pitched at least in, in the history among starters that have, I believe it's history. Don't, don't quote me on that. Cause, that, but that was what fan graph showed of guys that have pitched at least 500 innings mm-hmm. first among starters with within 11.01 K per nine, which we know what K per nine is. It just means you're striking out a lot of batters. So it's not necessarily like, you're pitching real life pitching that well, but I mean, man, he just has so much stuff that, so I, I mean, I agree with you, Alex, like he's been an extreme disappointment, at least for me too. Cause I'm like, this signing was supposed to be, Oh, this is our ace for years to come, you know? And it's just, but he's, he's turning, it seems like he's turning a corner, you know? So I don't know, I'm, I'm still wishful thinking. Yeah, yeah, and uh, just uh, for a quick second, going back to the you know Bryce Harper 
Uh, I want to shout out one of our writers, uh, Mark, Marcus Mendoza. He wrote uh, an article, uh, one of his deep dives, deep dives on on Harper a couple of weeks ago. So go to our site and you can find that article. Go ahead and read that. So definitely a good read. He's got some some really good stats in there to back it back his uh, back it up, back it all up. So yeah. So and then you know obviously all those other articles because you can check out and move. You know, getting into the season, deeper into the season, we're going to have a lot of, you know, baseball articles coming out with uh, basketball and hockey ending soon. It's it's going to be all baseball, so definitely keep an eye out for all the new articles coming out. Yeah. Yeah, so do you guys want to, you know, kind of wrap it up here and do our pitchers and hitters of the week? Sure. So who – uh, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. So, for pitchers of the week, let me just pull up the exact stat. Uh, I don't know if I don't know if I've um, used him before, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going with uh, Lucas Giolito again. He's just been so good this year. Mm-hmm. I don't know what, what it is with him. I mean, I'm glad because he was a highly touted prospect. You know, he was supposed to be good. And he's finally pitching like that. I don't know what he changed in the off season, but it's really working for him. He won a what was it? What did he win? Pitcher of the month last month? Is that what? Or was it pitcher of the week or something? I don't know. Something. I think it was the month. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. it was too. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they're gonna be willing to give a back-to-back months awards, but if he can keep pitching like he did this week. Who knows? So I'm still pulling up the stats. I know he, he was 2-0 and this week, 15 innings. Let's see. 20 strikeouts in 15 innings uh, of work. He didn't give up an earned run. So he's, still, he's the only pitcher this week who made two starts who didn't give up a run. Uh, I know that. Let's see. It was uh, – sorry. Didn't have it pulled up yet. Um, all right. So – Cole Hamels also pitched really well, and I, that might be Joey's guy, so I'm not going to bring him up. But he gave up one run, zero earned <laughs> runs. Giolito, just no runs, no earned runs, only eight hits in 15 innings, 20 strikeouts. Uh, just great overall week, 0 6, six seven whip. Um, I don't know. I, he's really looking like he could be putting up a Cy Young uh you know, he, he, I don't, I don't want to jinx him or anything. So he has a bad stretch, but he's been pitching so well, and it's, it's great to see it from him because I was really hoping he'd pan out, uh, especially after last season. He acknowledged how bad he was last season in an interview and just what he's done to change. So I'm glad to see it. And then for hitters of the week, this one was a tough one because there were a few guys who I thought deserved it. I'm going to just bring, I know no one's going to mention this, so I'm just going to bring it up. Uh, this isn't my guy, but Tom Murphy, the catcher for uh, Seattle, he doesn't get to play every day, but man, he's been making, uh, taking advantage of the every opportunity he gets to play. So in his last four games, he's got four home runs uh, and he's not a home run hitter. So it's good to see that too. And, uh, and another, another catcher, Travis Darno, who's been terrible this year up until this week, you know, he only he only had a seven at bats this week, but he had three home runs. So, I mean, three home runs. He walked five times this week, and he had. A, let's see. Oh wait, my bad. Three home runs. He walked twice this week. Seven RBIs. Five seventy one average. I mean, twenty four eighty two OPS and seven at bats, but three home runs. Pretty impressive. But my hitter of the week is Jay Bruce. He made a transition from Seattle to Philadelphia and with Andrew McCutcheon out, they really needed production in the outfield and Jay Bruce has done just that. In 18 at bats, he's got eight hits, four home runs, two doubles, two singles, slashing 444, 444, he hasn't walked, uh, 1667 OPS so far. So he's been exactly what the Phillies needed with the loss of McCutcheon and hopefully it continues for him. All right, Joey, who you got? Um, yeah, uh, G- well, Gio was right that I do have my pitcher of the week is Hamels. So, uh, but, yeah, he starts uh, this, well, I guess dating back to uh, last 
one day because I don't know. I'm just I I figured it would be okay to use that since you know when looking at this I wasn't factoring in really this Sunday at all. So um, basically two starts from last Sunday. He pitched against the Cardinals last Sunday, and he gave up one one unearned run in that game. But uh, yeah, he he went one and one. If you factor in the two starts. But, yeah, like I said, the one was unearned. But uh, the one run was unearned. But 15 innings pitch, five hits, three walks, 14 Ks. Uh, he held opponents to a 109 batting average, and he had a 0. 0.53 whip, which, uh, yeah, he was just phenomenal. Um, I feel bad that he had to take that tough loss last Sunday. But, yeah, the bats just couldn't get it going against uh, Wainwright. But it was better. It was good to see them do that tonight, at least a little bit. But um, and then for my hitter of the week, I had Tommy Lastella, uh, twelve for twenty. This is going into today, at least. He hit a he hit a home run today. It was a solo shot. It was his fifteenth home run of the year. But um, going into today, yeah, yeah. I mean, Lastella. Like, who would have thought that this dude would have fifteen home runs? He didn't even have 15 career home runs before this year. No, I mean, where did this power come from? <laughs> I know. I'm a little uh, guy. He's juicing something. He's got to be. He's got to, like, something. He's corking his bat, too. Yeah. Like, I don't I, – like, he always could hit for average, though. Like, that's the thing. So, maybe it's just, you know, the subtle adjustments. Of, he's getting comp- He never got to play every day, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. He, any, every team he was on, with whether it be the Dodgers, whether it be the Cubs, you know, he never really got a chance to play every day. So maybe he just couldn't get in that rhythm where he was hitting for power. But, I mean, the last seven days leading up to today was 12 for 29 with two bombs and a 414 average. And then I think he, he went one for four today with a solo shot, which was his 15th. It's like – I mean, he's impressive. He's impressed me a lot, and that's that is my second all star. Just out of the field. I really want to give it to you, but I I gotta give it to Listella. I got I don't worry though. I know you guys are gonna kill me, so I got I do have one Yankee in one spot. But I'll save that for later. So just one Yankee. I got I got three. I got oh, shit. Bias much? No. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely okay. Gary Sanchez. Yeah, that's that's my guy. That's the guy I got too. But now I'm interested. Yeah, everything else Torres is in there too. I do, but uh, that's more of a bias thing because I know there's better shortstops in the American League right now. But yeah, I was thinking about putting him in there too, but like I had to look at average, and yeah, that's I had to go Tim Anderson, honestly. I wanted uh, to. I was between Polanco for me and. Uh, it was Polanco or Lindor, and because of track record, I went Lindor. Yeah, that's fair. So it's probably fucked up on me, but he's hitting close to 300, and I mean, he plays great defense, too. So. Sure. But I know we're not on that, but anyways, yeah, those are my hitters and pitchers of the week. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hitter and pitcher. All right, so my I'm going to go with my hitter of the week first. And, you know, I'm going to go with Christian Yelich. He's, what more can you say about the guy? He's just – he's unreal. Like, when he wins the MVP last year, and then this year he's, like, putting up another phenomenal year. And this week he was 12 for 20, which is 600. And it's, he was slashing 600, 640. He hit three home runs. And, you know, he just – the guy is just – Crazy good. He's just, I don't know what, he just seems like he's not going to slow down at all. It's, I don't, like, he just keeps put, producing and producing, and he's he'll definitely be in the MVP conversation at the end of the year. Again, yeah, definitely. He's definitely my MVP over Bellinger right now. Yeah, me too. Oh, wow, okay. I, yeah, I, but it, I still got Bellinger, I think, but only slightly. Yeah. His average yeah. is dropping, and the L just is going up, so I'm going to keep watching that. Yeah, yeah, it'll definitely be exciting to watch though with those those races. Oh yeah. Mhm. Even Josh Bell's a part of that a little bit. Oh yeah. 
And I still throw Javi in that mix too, Baez. Oh, yeah, that's true. He still had a really good uh, this week. I think he hit like 310 with four homers. So, three or four homers. I I have to double check, but I know for sure he hit three. And um, Mm -hmm. with 10 10 RBIs. So, I was like, I mean, he still is playing up to that level too. He just had that little kind of funk, but it was almost, I think it was more so because he was a little bit hurt, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same could be said about Yelich too, because, I mean, but even when he came minor, I mean, he didn't take much time off either, just like Baez, but he didn't struggle at all. So, I mean, to me, it's still like the, yeah, and you throw in Josh Bell in that conversation, he's been incredible too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So for my uh, pitcher of the week, I'm a, I was thinking about who to do for this, but um, I, I'm actually going to go with Zach Plesak of the Indians. He had a pretty good week, and he he actually got his first first MLB win against the Yankees. So it, that's a pretty good thing to do. And yeah. his his dad <laughs> his his dad is Dan Plesak, and. Uh, Dan actually had his first victory against the Yankees too, so it's kind of a cool thing, cool stat there. Hmm. And he overall he had he pitched fourteen and two thirds innings, uh, struck out twelve, and only gave up let's see, two. He only gave up two one runs. Yeah. And he walked. Okay. Uh, and he walked. And he walked. He only walked two as well. So it's definitely a good week. And you know, to get your first MLB victory is also a plus. So I mean, I, obviously, yeah. as I said, against the Yankees. So yeah, those are my. That's my hitter and my pitcher of the week. Yeah, so, give a quick, uh, quick tip of the cap here to uh, Nick Pavetta too, who threw mm-hmm. uh, 15 innings, one run. 15 strikeouts. I mean, everybody was talking about him going into the year, uh, how he's going to break out. And, you know, he didn't live up to it. He got sent down to AAA, and he's really making the most out of his second opportunity so far. So hopefully that can be for him. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he's been really soft. Man, didn't he have a game or two games where he didn't walk anybody? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he didn't walk anyone this week. Fifteen innings, no was walks. That, was that what you did? You already say that? I, just, I didn't say that. No, I didn't. Oh, I didn't well, that. man, he was. Yeah, you. he's been really good since. Weird. What? What the fuck is up with these guys who just? It's like they almost need to get sent down to the minors, just to like kick them in the ass or like refocus or figure, like work on something minor, and then they come back and just start dominating again. Hopefully, this keeps up because. Like we were talking about earlier with C.J. Edwards too, yeah, off yeah. air. Like he got sent down to the minors and he came back and he had an ERA under three and he's been killing it up until tonight. And then he got pulled, of course, in the ninth inning. But <laughs> you know, that's it, it's like right on cue. Like as soon as you start talking about something, then it's it's bound to just go the other way. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Pavetta's been really good though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, guys, you got any more any dip, any uh any more comments going into this week? Uh, I guess I'll take that as a no. <laughs> <laughs> we will give it a week. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, so as we said before, we were we were going to do all uh, talk about all star game ballots, but we actually gonna, we'll save that for next week. It's been a pretty long episode already, so uh, next week will be you know talking about who who, are, who we think our le- the leaders are in all star in all star game ballots who who should be starting and all that stuff. So and also like the new ball- how the new ballots set up, like where you vote twice. So like it's. As I said on the last episode, it's like you vote once like normal, but then they narrow it down to three for each position, and then you vote again. So it's a little bit different, and we'll see what happens there with how it goes. But, uh, yeah, other than that, though, 
uh, follow the score crow on Twitter the, at the score crow. Uh, follow, and I didn't mention this at the beginning, but follow, uh, follow myself at uh, Keeler score crow, K I E L A R score crow. And you can uh, follow Gio at Gio D'Amico. That, I said it right this time, right? Yep. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Uh, Gio D'Amico 15, G I O D A M I C O 15. And then uh, Joey is on Twitter at The Riot 326. And uh, as I said earlier, make sure you're, you're keeping an eye on the score crow and, you know, lo- looking out for these articles that we come out. And, and also, uh, if I come out, uh, we've been trying to get some, like, bonus episodes for the podcast out. So. We might have some some different episodes throughout the week, and you know, interviews. Hopefully, get some more interviews going here too. So keep an eye out for that. And you now, as as a reminder, you can never have too much pod tar. Hey, did you guys know that uh, Chris Paddock was traded from the Marlins to the Padres for Fernando Rodney? What? Whoa! Really? I knew he was traded from the Marlins. I didn't know it was for Fernando Rodney. Oh, <laughs> Way to go, Marlins. <laughs> <laughs> you fuck everything up. I know. I didn't even know Fernando Rodney was on the Marlins. Oh, yeah, he was there for half a year. What a good trade. Yeah. He got down for half a year. He pitched to a six ERA and then... Dude, Fernando Rodney has been, like, everywhere. It feels like yeah. He's been on, let's see. Oh, wow, he has. He's been on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's been on ten different teams. Oh my Jesus Christ! Who's... Oh, he, he was with the Cubs for like half a season, I want to say. Yeah, yeah, he mm. was. He, he was actually pretty good for them. Huh? He was. Yeah, he wasn't bad. Oh, yeah. He was working. He actually finished fifth in the Cy Young voting in 2012. Oh wow! I don't. I don't believe he's even finished like. Unless... He, well, he appeared in 76 games and had an 0-6-0 ERA. Oh wow! Jeez, what team was he on then? The Rays. Was that the? Ra- I was thinking that was the Rays. It was like his. Head. Yeah, I always loved facing him as the yeah, like it, but the Yankee when the Yankees faced him, like it, he was always like awful. <laughs> <laughs> was, the team he probably like struggled with the most, and he's in the same division with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he gave up five earned runs all year, probably all to the Yankees. Oh jeez. Yeah. <laughs> was he was you know he's been pretty. Lengthy career, like that dude's been. I know. Yeah, he's career been... three seven nine ERA. That's not terrible. No, no. like we look probably look at him as like this old scrub now, but like, man, just to make it this far, like. <laughs> I think it's time for him to throw in the towel, though. He's got a nine four two ERA this year. <laughs> he's getting near the end, I think. Yeah. I mean, this is his seventeenth year. I think he's he's forty two years old. Oh my god. Oh. Uh, do you guys remember? Do you remember Uga Thurbina? No, no, no. He used to pitch for the Marlins, and I don't remember who else right now. Uga, uh, I for, I don't even know how to spell. It. It's like U E G E T H H. Oh yeah, I've I know who that is because actually I wrote up that Marlins history article, and I wrote I I, I mentioned him in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I haven't had a chance to check that out yet. I've been trying to – dude, I've had so much, like, with the I, – I really like the history articles you do, too. And I, mm-hmm. like, I, try, to, I try to, you know, read them all, but then I've been mm-hmm. so busy. To, I don't know. It's like trying to come up with more content, too. Like, I start writing something, and Geo probably sees this because he's an editor. But, like, mm-hmm. I write so much stuff. And like put it in the drafts, and yeah. like yeah. The stuff I've already trashed. But like my Jordan Lyles deep dive, I have done zero deep dives yet because I start oh. writing them and then I get too tired or like I have to leave or something, and then yeah. like, oh I'll like figure a way to put onto words later, and then it's like oh fuck, well now they just made their their next start. Now I have all new information. Mm-hmm. Well, Lyles is coming back down to earth, so. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I feel like, and that's like why I probably need to do more research with that because it's like his spin rate on his curveball was like terrific. 
Like mm-hmm. it, was, it was increasing like every single game. It just kept getting better and better as far as like his spin rate and, you know, stuff like that and his swinging strikes and all that. So I was like, okay, you know, he's making a significant change. He's trying to become more of a power pitcher. You know, I thought that that'd be good, especially for fantasy. But then now he's like pitching like shit. And I'm wondering maybe yeah. he, he still could be like a buy low guy, but I don't know. I just have to research it more again. Yeah. 